Uh, he's going to do his last presentation for this event. Thank you very much. And uh, let's welcome Brian last time.
Anyone else like the train one? Anyone else like the copyright? I mean, if you think some of the issues about getting the permission to use the jungle trademark have been difficult for you guys. When we were called Mambo, there was an Australian surfing company who had trademarks on everything. And they were very friendly. Regularly got phone calls from them. Seven o'clock in the morning. You must remove this. You can't do a t-shirt this. You can't do this. So we learned we didn't want to go down that route. And the next thing we realised, we wanted to give it a good name. Something that had meaning. So surprise, surprise, 22 people in the chat room all talking about what we're going to call Spork. And we argued. 22 people, 23 suggestions. And the argument got a little bit heated. It's Jumbo. Of course the argument got excited. Through desperation, August 19th, Andrew made a post on the forum that we quickly set up, asking for suggestions. We had a few clues to give you about what we were looking for. We thought of something called a recursive acronym. We liked the idea of something based on the phoenix, rising from the flames, CMS blah, CMS blur, and maybe something based on language. <laughs> Now this one was my personal favourite idea, the recursive acronym. The recursive acronym is something like GNU, you said that GNU is not Unix, or wine, wine is not an emulator. And I realised that the end of the job was I couldn't think of the first name to decide on the rest of it. So the Phoenix, of course, something like Harry Potter, rising from the ashes. We did try and uh, add quite like the word Phoenix, F-E-E-N-I-X. And but nobody else said so that was that one job. <laughs> um, we were quite proud of the uh, Mambo at the time. As you should be still proud of the Jumbo today. It supports more languages than any other open source CMS web platform that exists. So maybe there was something we could do with language. Now, all our meetings that took place on IRC, and if you were offline for four hours, it would take you another two hours to read what happened whilst you were offline. Lots of suggestions, lots of ideas, lots of false paths. We had a, one suggestion, uh, was the name of Jazzy. J-A-Z-Z-I, or J-A-Z-Z-I. Jazzy was great when Jazzy.com was available. Jazzy.net was available, but someone had registered Jazzy.org. So we found out where they lived in America and we telephoned them and we begged them and no, they didn't want to know. So we had to keep searching. Drum roll, please, for the final three options that we decided. This is what Jumbo could have been called. So taking on the Phoenix idea, it could have been called. Zegris. Zegris is a butterfly, it comes out of the moth, the lovely thing that becomes beautiful. And we kind of like the orange tips on the wings because Mambo, if you remember, used orange. It seems we've reclaimed the colour orange for Jumbo here at Jane Beyond. The only problem was Mitch thought it sounded like a Russian submarine. Yeah, okay, it's a battleship, not a submarine, but find a picture of a submarine. Then a wide heart to photograph him because that under the water. But I don't know. Somebody else had a suggestion to base it on primary, it's called primary key. It's a sort of silly joke about the MySQL database and how it works. Um, again, I think this one was Andrew's idea again, I forget. Um, and again, we changed that one because Means like PostgreSQL and they deal with primary keys and things like that very differently. So we didn't really it was controversial. And then the final one, when we were looking at the language idea, we wanted to choose a name that expressed language. Now, the first place we looked was Esperanto, the global international language. Does anybody speak Esperanto? No? Has anybody ever looked at Esperanto? Okay. It's the world's ugliest language. Yeah. 
He makes Greek, it's like combining Greek with German, with French, with an English accent. <laughs> it's horrible. But a few of us sat there and we found an online English to Esperanto dictionary and we started, we were online and we started to read it. And after a couple of hours we realized that one wasn't there. So we looked at another language. Now at the time, Ubuntu, the language distribution, had just been released. And Ubuntu is a Swahili word. And we thought, yeah, let's be original, let's copy that, let's have a look at the Swahili dictionary. And we looked at the Swahili dictionary, and after a couple of hours, I had enough of this, it's at 3 o'clock in the morning, I went to bed. And I woke up in the morning, and Jean Marie had sent an email to everyone saying, I found the solution. I found the word Joomla. And Joomla means, we all know hopefully now, all together. And we thought that sounded cool. So we've now got three final suggestions. Zegris, the partnership. Oh, yeah. Primary key. Yeah, not said. And Joomla. So how did we decide between the three? We obviously were not going to come to an easy agreement because we hadn't agreed on anything yet so far, so why should we agree on this? So we decided to have a secret ballot. The secret ballot took place on the forum and we had 24 hours to cast our votes. And I think the deadline was at 8 p.m. my time. Andrew could see all the votes coming in, and I could see all the votes coming in. And at 5 p.m., Andrew said, we have a winner. <clears throat> and I'm like, it's 5 p.m., not 8 p.m. So it doesn't matter because we know which one has majority. Like, has everybody voted? No. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what they say because we already have a majority. So it, we argued again. <laughs> and we knew it was all going to end in tears. <laughs> so the secret, the, the nice cats didn't find his name. The secret ballot, we even managed to mess that one up. That didn't give his name. So we're stuck. And then Peter Russell said, guys, I know this company in the USA, and they do brand consultancy for Disney. And what we can do is I'll speak to them if you want, and I'll send them the three names, and they will do a brand consultancy exercise with focus groups and various different things, and in a few days they'll come back to us with a name. But there's one condition. And remember, we've been fighting, we've been crying, we've been screaming, we're getting desperate. Conditions, no problem. What's the condition, Pete? So the condition is whatever we suggest, whatever they suggest, we go with. And we decided, you know what? I had enough of all this argument, all this fighting, got plenty of other things to do. Whatever they say, it's cool. So Pete sent it off to these, these Americans of Disney, and we waited, and we waited, and then Pete sent me that. I have the decision. And this is what we got. J double O M L A with the bang at the end. So we've agreed to this. Brand consultants have said this. It's great. Now I just have one little problem with these brand consultants. Peter never said who they were. I strongly believe, and ask you and said the same thing, I don't know about Alex, I don't believe these guys ever existed. I think Peter just sat at home, chose his favourite one, stole the bang at the end from Yahoo, and announced it. <laughs> so, I said, I saw Pete um, six months ago, and I said, Peter, come on, 2005, a long time ago now, you can be honest with me, did the brand consultant ever exist? Yes, Brian, 
Pete, come on. It's me you're talking to. Did the brand consultant ever exist? Yes, bro. A bit later on, we had a few beers. Pete, did the brand consultant ever exist? Yes, bro. So, the brand consultant obviously did exist. I'm sure, still convinced the brand consultant existed in Peter's mind. <laughs> but, what the heck? Now, the first reaction to the name was sort of Mitch Purtle in the middle here. He said, how can I go down Wall Street and pitch Joomla to my big clients? I'm going to sound like an Oompa Loompa from, from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And there were a few other people that made some comments. But, again, we've had enough. We just wanted to move on. And after all, what's the name? There was a little bit more arguing. And people stopped listening. And I think people stopped even caring. We just talked the brand consultants. Sorry. We just talked Peter Russell's brand consultants, imaginary friends, advice. So, let's move forward. September 1st, 2005. At 5 p.m. I sent an email out to everybody who had a Mambo domain. And it said, we have a new name. The name is Joomla. You may register domains equivalent to your Mambo domain. But please, nothing else. We trust you not to announce the name to anyone. And we trust you that if you have mambohosting.com, you will register joomlahosting.com, but you will not register every possible name you can think of. It was trust. And it worked. I think there was one or two little accidents, but they were soon resolved. This is a Google search at two minutes to six for the word Joomla. And as you can see, there were three hits. It's a little bit different today. This is our IRC chat room at one minute to six. Interestingly, it's an IRC chat room on a computer. This is a photograph of the screen. Not a screen grab. Arno's wife was taking photographs of the screen as she was going. As everything was going along, she's taking photographs of the screen. We have a few others. Yeah, there's a few, there's a few other interesting, interesting photographs on there. So then, at 6 p.m., UK time, uh, 6 p.m. G uh, GMT. We were on summertime, and that caused a few arguments. You're late, of course. It's your mum. You're always late. <laughs> and I had the honour of announcing in the forums the new name, Joomla. And we sat back in our chat room waiting for the response. Guess what? Mixed response. <laughs> Now, one thing that we didn't really consider, we were really proud that Joomla meant all together. We thought that was cool, we thought that was really good. But we didn't consider, did it actually mean anything in any other languages? So you think you were trying to think of a name for a product or a project or a company, and you come up with a really cool name, try and check other languages to see if it means anything. Now, we were lucky. Um, it had some meaning in some Arabic dialects, but it means like a dance party or dancing together or something like that. So that was okay. It was cool. And I actually, when I gave this presentation in Hot uh, Jumbo Holland six weeks ago, that was the only other alternative meaning that I'd ever come across. And I got an email from one of the Jumbo Estonia users who said, well, actually, it kind of means something in Estonian as well. Interesting, what's it mean? It's all the word, the jum part of it. It sounds a bit like the word for drink. And then when you put a la at the end, it sort of means that place. So jum la, in Estonian, is the pub. 
<laughs> After this chat, we all think it's definitely appropriate that the podcast says you know, if any, anyone who's thinking of doing sessions at uh, another event like this, if you really want to get, clearly, if you want to guarantee a good attendance to your talk, don't accept room two, three, four, or five. Go downstairs into the pub. In the same way that we changed the U to the double O, we also looked at a few other tweaks. If you miss out the M and it becomes Jula, it's one of the world's leading table tennis companies. So, if we were called Jula, is this what the next OSM president would look like? So, at that point, I'd like to thank you very much. Um, this slide obviously is out of date. I'm not really good at Photoshop. It should, the, the May 30th, 31st, 2010, should have just been changed to say 2011, because I'm pleased to announce that there will be JM beyond 2011. Um, we'd like to encourage you to help us plan that event and get that event started. Um, one way you can do that, and we'd really appreciate it, um, all your help in getting JMBL 2011 going is we do have a few extra t-shirts, just a few. Um, they're 10 euros each. Uh, they're in the developers lounge, I think the green row at the back. Um, anybody wants one, that 10 euros is going to go towards helping us plan JMBL 2011. So um, we may do another fundraising t-shirt. Um, this one also has my name on the back, so I'm not a messiah, I'm a very naughty boy. That's all folks, thank you very much. <laughs>